Hi, so in the previous video we looked at the new Keynesian model and derived some results and actually in the most recent one we looked in particular at menu costs in the new Keynesian model and from the new Keynesian model we can start to think about deriving a Phillips curve which shows us the inflation, the, should I say, the relationship between uh, inflation and output or the relationship between inflation and unemployment depending on how you want to define your Phillips curve and which variables you want to base it on and so in this video I'm going to be looking at the expectations augmented Phillips curve and in the next video we'll look at the actual new Keynesian Phillips curve and then we can sort of compare and contrast what these two Phillips curves say and yeah okay so We've talked in this video series about the importance of micro-founding our approach and looking and building up from the micro level using the optimality conditions of the household and of the firms and we're going to continue to do that with our Phillips curve and there are a number of reasons why we do that and we talked about that in our video on micro-founding. So if we're micro-founding we're going to begin with our optimal labor supply choice and we saw in one of the previous videos that this optimal labor supply choice was given by this equation here and it's just some function of the real wage and the elasticity of labor supply gamma and in this video we're going to want to take the natural logarithm of everything and so it's a lot easier to substitute these values into each other and to rearrange them so we don't have all these powers to the 1 over 1 minus gamma. So if we just take the natural logarithm, our optimal labor supply choice looks like this. Uh, again, we, we derive the optimal price for a monopolistically competi competitive firm. And again, it was their, their costs here multiplied by this mark of eta over eta minus 1. And if we take the natural log of this equation, we get out this optimal price but the natural log of the optimal price and we also had this production function which said the output of a firm i was just equal to the quantity of labor it employed and we can say the natural log of that and that's very simple so we have these three equations here which basically make up and they make up our markets they we have optimal labor supply choice and optimal firm price and our production function and we can think about substituting those into each other and from that we can then start to derive a Phillips curve relation. So what we are going to do to begin with is substitute this optimal firm price equation into our optimal labor supply choice and we can rearrange this equation to isolate this natural logarithm of the real wage and substitute that in here for the the same term in our optimal labor supply equation. So that's what this first line of algebra does here and we we get out that we have our natural logarithm of the optimal firm's price is equal to our parameters and the labor the quantity of labor of this firm. And so what we can then do with this equation is we note that we have pi over p and we are saying that we have a symmetric equilibrium here and so in equilibrium these two are equal the price price chosen by a firm is equal to the price level in the aggregate economy so one divided by the other is just going to be equal to one and if we substitute this into our equation above we take the natural logarithm of one which is equal to zero. So for our equilibrium condition is that we have zero is equal to the natural logarithm of this markup plus the elasticity of labor supply minus one multiplied by the natural log of L bar, which is our labor in equilibrium. We can start thinking of our equilibrium quantities as being, say, our target output, and our target output is going to come with a target labor supply. So in the long run this will be fixed at this level so we think of it as L bar as some fixed labor at the equilibrium. So from this equilibrium condition 
we can just rearrange to get that the natural log of our markup is equal to well we're just substitute subtracting this term um, in which is in terms of L bar from both sides and we just get this condition that the natural logarithm of the markup is equal to the uh, this term on the right hand side which I yeah so negative uh, gamma minus 1 multiplied by ln L bar. So with this condition here, if I switch colors to blue, this condition we can just substitute this in to our condition at the top. And we're doing this because we want to get rid of uh, the the eta term that's showing up a lot. And we, we want to, what we're looking for in deriving a Phillips curve relationship is just getting the price level or inflation in terms of our in terms of our output or our output gap. So we want to get everything in terms of L, which we can then substitute for output. So when we substitute that in uh, this equation above, we can then factorize and we will get this equation below. So we have the natural log of price I over the price level is equal to gamma minus one um, multiplied by the difference in the firm's labor supply li from the natural level of employment l bar or the target level of employment and so now we're starting to look like a phillips curve relationship we've got some sort of output gap but it's currently in terms of the labor the labor supply choice which we're going to change in a second so we notice that ln pi over p if we we can just use rules of logs to say that this is the same as the natural log of pi minus the natural log of the price level and then i'm just um, added that to both sides to get it onto the other side of the equation to get to this equation here and then what we need to notice is that in setting its own price level firm i has to take expectations of the price level of the whole economy they, if what we assume in this is that the firm doesn't doesn't just know what the <clears throat> what the price level of the whole economy is, he's got to make some guess in time t minus one. He's got to make some expectations about the price level in time t, <clears throat> and this seems somewhat realistic because a firm isn't necessarily going to know exactly what price level every other firm is going to set in a given time period. So he's got to make some prediction about what the price level is going to be so we have the expectations operator here and now if we want a Phillips curve we're going to want an aggregate relationship so this is where we go from our micro our micro founded model and we aggregate it to give us some aggregate relationship so we aggregate up the PI into just the aggregate price level because we have a representative firm so we're assuming that every firm is acting in the same way in this model. Uh, this, is e this is equal to the expectations of the price level. And then we're also going to aggregate up this LI. But we s sort of skipped a step here where we aggregate this LI into L. And well, we know that QI is equal to LI. And we, if we're aggregating this up, we say that Q is equal to L. And we know that Q is just going to be our output in the economy, so this is equal to Y here. So aggregating up our micro Phillips curve, we get this. We get our aggregate Phillips curve relationship, which is the natural log of the price level is equal to the expectations of the log of the price level plus this um, constant here, which is our elasticity of labor minus 1, multiplied by this sort of output gap we have. But we're not quite done there because in a Phillips curve, we don't just look at the log of the price level, we look at inflation. And there's a trick that we do when we are coming up with a Phillips curve relationship is we can just subtract this term here, ln pt minus one from both sides of the equation. And because what we can then do is this ln pt minus ln pt minus one, this is just an approximation of the inflation rate because the the price in period t minus the price in period t minus one the this is the change in price between the two periods which we can say is the inflation rate 
because these are these we've taken natural logs. So as I said, so this term here, LNPT minus LNPT minus one, is just inflation, which is what I've done here. And similarly with the expectations operator, we have this expectations of LNPT minus LNPT minus one. So this is just going to equal to the expectations of what our inflation rate is because we know this price level here but in making an expectation of the price level in period t we're going to have to make some expectation about the inflation rate in period t and then uh, at the end of this equation we've just rewritten the natural logarithm of our outputs as being the lowercase uh, y and that's just a notational convention that we have lowercase letters meaning the natural logarithm of that variable. So this equation that we have here, which I've got surrounded by lots of little doodles, this is our expectations augmented Phillips curve. It's a Phillips curve which says that our inflation rate is going to depend on our expectations of inflation in the future period. And then also it will depend on some constant multiplied by our output gap and we may be used to seeing some Phillips curve which would say the difference in unemployment from the natural rate of unemployment but this is effectively the same we can say that the output gap and the say unemployment gap are effectively equivalent and they may differ by some constant so it just depends what we define this constant to be we'd often just view this as being alpha or beta or something and it's a constant multiplying this output gap and how that feeds into inflation and if we have a large positive output gap we're we're going to increase our inflation rate and if we have a large negative output gap we're going to decrease our inflation rate so we we can then make a number of assumptions about what this expectation of um, inflation is going to be uh, notice that this expectation is made in period t minus one because this is the the firm or each individual firm is making their predictions for inflation period t based on in based on information from the previous period and we've aggregated this up so what we might use is we might say that this is equal to the inflation rate in the previous period in which case we have backward looking inflation expectations and um, but this this isn't necessarily what we observe in the data so how, how we define this expectations operator or how we define the expectation of inflation in the next period is going to be very important for what inflation is going to be and what firms expectations are will very much impact what our inflation actually is in this model so that will just about round off this video uh, make sure to leave a like if it was at all useful i will be discussing the New Keynesian Phillips curve, which we derive using the Calvo Ferry in the next video, so check out the playlist for that and make sure to subscribe for lots of future videos.